Hey there, so we just finished notes over atomic parts, so protons, neutrons, electrons. Specifically, how do we take information, like from the periodic table or a picture or a hyphen notation or nuclear symbol and find the protons, neutrons, electrons? We're now going to be on the other side of those notes talk about ions, okay? So let's talk about ions because they are atoms, but they are special atoms. So let's find out about ions, okay? Ions are atoms that have a charge. So they're positive or negative, okay? They have a charge. Now here's the catch. You wanna be careful about this. The only way that an atom can get a charge is to gain or lose electrons. That, that's all that can be moved, electrons. Can't mess with those protons, can't mess with those neutrons. They're deep down inside in the nucleus. There's no way to like get them to go somewhere, okay? They're, nothing can reach them. But those electrons on the outside, oh yeah, we can, we can get energy to like grab them and, and move them around and stuff like that. So atoms can gain or lose electrons to become positive or negative. Now, that might be weird. We are able to move negative electrons and get negative atoms and positive atoms just by moving negative electrons. So you got to keep this straight in your head. Be very careful. So let's go through the two types, and then we'll talk about how this all works out. Okay. Cat ions, that's how it's pronounced, cat ions uh, from cathode ray tube, cathode cat ions, that's the name. Okay, so cations have a positive charge. So if all I can move are the negative electrons on the outside of the atom, then how do I get a positive? Well, we remove them. So what is left? Less electrons than protons, more positive in the nucleus, less negative around, no longer balances, no longer cancels. It is positive because I've got more positive than negative, okay? Um, I can have a positive one, and that happens if we lose or, or remove one electron, one negative electron, okay? Positive two is removing two negative electrons. Positive three is removing three negative electrons, okay? Now, it might seem weird that I'm saying a plus sign and I'm saying remove. And so I want you to be very, very intentional of saying negative electrons every time you say electrons, because if you do, it'll make sense. Oh yeah, positive three, because I have lost three negative electrons. And if you lose three negative things, that leaves you positive by three. That should make sense, okay? The second kind of an, uh, the second kind of ion is an anion. An anion is negative because it's got more. So here's my atom and like more electrons come and join in, okay? And so with more negative on the outside than positive in the very middle in the nucleus, it's gonna be negative. And again, I want you to put like the word negative in front of electrons to really help this work. So that if I have one additional negative electron, oh yeah, I should be negative one. If I have two additional negative electrons, I should be negative two. That should make sense. If I have three more negative electrons, the normal should be negative three. Okay, so if you put the keyword negative in front of the word electrons, when you say these are going to be a lot better off. All right, so we've done a chart like this before. It's not like you've done before. Be very careful. We've done a chart like this before in the notes, but this is different. I'm gonna go through the first two lines and then I'll leave you to fill in the others, but I want you to see how this works, okay? So I'm gonna get a color to annotate here with, uh, how about some violet? We'll see if violet shows up, okay. So here I have nuclear notation going on. I wanna be on, okay, I can't be on that screen. Oh, well, uh, I'm gonna be nuclear notation. This is obviously potassium, okay? I've got a 39 and a 19, so what do I know? Well, I know what this 19 here tells me. It tells me I have an atomic number of 19 and I know my handwriting on my mouse here sucks, but you'll live, it's a 19, okay? And I know my atomic mass is a 39. And I know whatever my atomic number is, my number of protons is that. So there's a 19 going on there. I have to subtract for neutrons, there's a 20. And normally, previously on the other side of your notes, 
we would have said 19 protons is canceled with 19 electrons, but it's not canceled this time. Check this out. I have a pod, what's this mean? Positive one, right? Because it's just like in math class. It's our option. We don't have to write once. So that is a positive one, okay? I do have to write twos and threes and fours and so on, okay. So with a positive one charge, how do I get positive one? By gaining negative electrons or losing negative electrons? Oh yeah, to get positive, I have to lose negative electrons. You see how that makes sense when you say negative in there? All right, so it's gonna only have 18 electrons. So 18 negatives with 19 positives just added up. Oh yeah, I'm a positive one. Okay, hyphen notation. I'm going to attempt to spell potassium, or I'm going to attempt to write it. I know how to spell it. Attempt to write it here. P-O-T-A-S-S. -S. Yes, it is spelled like potass. Okay, potassium. And I've had students who've declared they can't even spell potass, and I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do to help you. Sorry. So potassium 39, because it's still the mass going on there. Okay, so what's the only thing that changes with ions? The number of electrons, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do one more with you and then you're on your own for the rest. Um, let's try some pink here. I've got 33 for atomic number. And so I know atomic number and number of protons always the same. So it's gotta have a 33 here, okay. And I know I'm going to subtract to find this. So uh, let's see, that's 54. And if you're yelling that I did the math wrong, I can't hear you. So sorry. I'm, don't do it wrong if I did it wrong. All right. And then, oh, well, I already have the electrons filled in. So um, let's, let's write the thing here. Um, what element is it? Oh, well, it's element 33. So let's look up element 33, right? Okay. So I grab my periodic table, which I always have right here. Okay. And I find element 33 is arsenic. Okay. So I'm going to try to write arsenic. A R S E N. That's supposed to be an E. I C arsenic. And the mass is 87. Okay. And I'm gonna write the nuclear notation. So that's arsenic is a S, not a R, that's argon. A S is arsenic, okay. The mass is 87 and my atomic number is 33. Now, since this is on the ion side, I'm thinking there might be a charge. So let's see, does 33 positives cancel 36 negatives? No, what do I have more of? negative electrons. What should this be? Negative by how many? Hope you're saying three, because it is. It's I've got three more electrons than protons, so it's going to be a negative three. Okay, so there we go. There's my nuclear notation. So what's the difference with ions? Well, we're going to have a difference here in this column. Only one column really changes. But that column change affects the charges that you're going to see on the nuclear notation. I want to call those circles. So they're not really circles, I know. Uh, but look at how little I circle. That's how little change. So ions are really not a big change. But it is going to be important, especially as we move forward in chemistry and we're going to be talking about making compounds like this is one of the ways that atoms make compounds is by having positive and negative atoms stick together. So very important that you recognize when it is an ion and we know it's an ion if the electrons and protons do not cancel. Remember, throw in the word negative in front of electrons and I think you'll be a lot better off on remembering how it's going to end up positive or negative. And uh, after these notes, you've got practice in Canvas to do. So be sure you do that. Okay, so good luck.